Hello, uh, my dear YouTuber friends, and I do hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video. This is Back to Basics Part 21, the in-depth guide for autopilot functions or two autopilot functions for newbies or for new players. I put up a recent community post giving you the choice of videos that you wanted me to make me next. And this video was the most highly chosen with over 200 volts currently altogether so far. The volts keep going up. So this is the video from the one that you wanted to see essentially. So in this video, let me get in the cockpit, I'm going to show you the autopilot functions. I've done back to basic videos on autopilot functions in the past. With this one, I'm going to cater it specifically to new players, very new players. You may be very new to flight sims altogether. So I'll be explaining slowly the autopilot functions, the basic autopilot functions. Things like assigned autopilot altitude, what all these pertain to, all these different symbols and writings on the autopilot panels, and even a bit of ILS autopilot, basic ILS towards the end of the video. So hopefully this is going to help a lot of new players out. Okay, let's not dilly dally. Let's get on with this video. Okay, I'm all set up on London City Airport. People call it Hoddison International, runway 27. There's TPHI, one of our Discord regulars. When I go live, chaps, by the way, I generally announce it to Discord. I'm generally on Discord, so you can see me live. There's TPHI, lovely. Uh, so you can know, if you want to be in a video like TPHI there, just watch out for me on Discord when I'm flying, and I'll typically announce it. Now... Setting up from the ground, I don't have any autopilot functions set at all. I'm going to start with the very basics. One thing I do want to uh, emphasize here, though, is the active pause. I'm going to be using it throughout this lesson. Make use of it if you haven't already. Just go move your cursor on Xbox or PC to the top. Ignore that. I've got flow installed. I'm not going to go into that in this episode. But typically, you'll see active pause to the left, or you can have a button assigned to it on your joystick or flight controller. So I'm going to be making use of that, and do make use of it, especially if you're learning autopilot functions. You can just hit active pause, take a moment, set your autopilot, and then unpause it. Anyway, let's throttle up. I don't want to set anything. I'm not going to set up autopilot, or goodness knows what. Just going to get up in the air. So, easy peasy so far. By the way, I'm using the Cessna 172. If you're going to learn autopilot functions, it's a default Cessna 172 aircraft with the G1000. This is the aircraft I recommend. Once you get used to autopilot functions with this aircraft, you can move on to more complex aircraft, and they should be a little bit easier to understand. Once you've got the grasp of what autopilot does and its various functions. So definitely, uh, the, probably the best starter aircraft to learn autopilot functions is the Cessna 172. As you can see there. Okay, we're just up in the air. I'm just going to put it into a slight trim, uh, slight climb configuration. So I'm just trimming. If you don't know what trimming is all about and why it's important, I'll link a video I did about trimming and the importance of it in the top right. Maybe go and watch that after this video. There we go. What I'm going to do now, I'm slightly climbing. I'm just going straight, straight ahead. I'm going to hit the autopilot button. Turn autopilot on. There we go. So what happens is autopilot lights up here. You've got... R-O-L here, which means roll. Roll is your basically left and right movement, so when you roll your rings, li wings left or right, and pitch, P-I-T, stands for pitch. 
So that's autopilot, roll, and pitch. Basically, whatever c configuration I left the aircraft in before hitting autopilot, the autopilot's going to go to that configuration. I've got a button set up on my controller, and I fully recommend you do the same. Instead of me coming down here to hit autopilot, I've got a button set up on my Velocity 1 flight stick. Autopilot's flashing, it means it's off. Because I want to trim down a bit, I don't want to climb that high. So I'm just trimming down, bringing my throttle back slightly so I don't over rev the engine. And there we go. So what does autopilot do when you turn it on? Let's just turn it on and active pause it. What it does basically, like I said, it's like it's going to hold you in your roll and pitch, but it's it's like turning on your desktop PC. If you have a Windows or Mac and you're using, uh, is it Linux with Macs? Macs now, I'm not sure I'm out of the loop there. If you turn it on, you don't have anything on your hard drive. Nothing's going to happen on your PC. The same kind of thing happens with autopilot. If you turn it on, but you don't have anything set, you don't have your altitude set, you don't have a heading set, you don't have any autopilot function set within the sim. So maybe you don't even have a course set. I don't at the moment. All the, all the autopilot's going to do is just follow your roll and pitch profile that you had before you turned it on and keep you in that configuration like I showed you before. It's just like a master switch, but it does nothing by itself until you input further instructions. So I hope that's clear. The AP will light up. It will keep you in your roll, left and right movement, whatever you were in, and your pitch. In my case, I've got a slight climb going on, so it's going back to that slight climb. So let's just turn that autopilot off and unpause the sim. So with that in mind, what can we do here? Let me just bring my altitude down a little bit. Can we see other people that we know here? Uh, maybe one or two other people. What I want to do, I'm going to active pause it again. And we can do this under active pause. I want to set an autopilot selected altitude. So what I want to do, I want the autopilot, when I turn it on, I want it to climb to an altitude I'm going to set here in this box. And I can use these knobs down here in the Cessna 172. These may be in different places for different aircraft. You may even have buttons to control your altitude in some aircraft. In the Grand Caravan, for example, it's in the center panel. Let me just throttle back a bit more. I do seem to be over revving the engine. In the Cessna 172, we're concentrating concentrating up upon here. The knobs are down here. If I move the outer knob, that's what they're called officially, so I'm going to go with that. So the outer knob, which is this big knob here. If I mouse up once, this will go up in increments of 1,000. So there's 2,000, 3,000. We'll keep it at 3,000. If I move the inner knob, so it's this smaller knob, that will move you up in increments of 100. So there you go. I've just commanded. That's a better way of looking at it. You're commanding the autopilot. Once you turn it on, because you've now given it instructions, you're commanding it to fly to that to fly up to 3,000, 3,500 feet. It's a little bit extreme. Let's actually do 2,500. So I use this inner knob. Sorry, the outer knob. <laughs> Confusing myself now. I'll just mouse down once to get it to 2,500. So what I'll do here, get back up, unpause it, and I'm going to hit the autopilot button on my controller. Let me just pitch down a bit. That's going way above where I want. There we go. So I'm just in a slight climb. Slight climb, please. I'm just trimming up. Yeah, cross going to take a moment just to catch up with me. That will do. I'm going to hit the autopilot button. What will happen now, it will start climbing to that 2,500 feet, which I set here. I've commanded it by inputting those numbers to climb to that altitude. You can see the AT, A A ALTS there. That stands for Selected Altitude Capture Mole. That's the official uh, 
meaning of these letters. So what you say, what, what it's telling you there, you're commanding it, like I've just said, to capture that altitude. Once it does capture that altitude, you'll see these numbers here change to, sorry, these letters here change to A-T-A-L-T. We've still got the roll and pitch captured here, whatever roll and pitch profile we were in. The autopilot's still capturing them. The only thing I've commanded it to do is to climb to that 2,500 feet. So we can just do that. You can increase the rate of climb. Now I don't want it to go too quickly on this lesson. But it's not a difficult one to grasp. Down here you've got something called vertical speed. If you look here we're climbing. Actually I, I'll leave that for a little bit later. Because I'll just let it climb to that 2500. We're almost there. So we'll keep climbing up. Take a quick look around us to see what's happening. Yeah, there's a couple of names I recognise there. Get back into the cockpit. We're slowly getting there. It's now climbing at 450, 450 feet per minute. Whatever numbers is displayed here, that's the feet Per minute the autopilot is climbing at so every minute it's now climbing well it's going down now because the 8 LTS is flashing because we're about to capture the alt of 2500 feet which we have there so that will stop flashing in a moment it'll just go solid green and it will tell us there what height our aircraft is what we've commanded it to climb at all very simple but that's just a very basic autopilot control. The only thing we've done is assigned an altitude and it's climbed to it. And what I'm going to show you now are a couple more functions that you could do in autopilot. Just so you can command it that little bit further. Okay, so let me show you a couple more functions. I've pretty much left it in the same configuration from the last part of the video. I don't want to be at 2,500 feet, I want to be at 1,000, so using these altitude knobs again, I'm going to use move the bigger one, mouse down on it, so the outer knob here, mouse down it to 1,500, use the inner knob to mouse down to 1,200 feet. As you can see, it's not doing anything. I've commanded it to climb to 1,000, sorry, descend to 1,200 feet. It's not actually doing it because I have to give it further instructions. It's going to stick whatever, if it reaches the autopilot assigned altitude you set before, it will stay there until you give it more autopilot functions. The easiest way to do this, and I'm going to show you this in this video, is by vertical speed. Remember I said that number there denotes whether you're climbing or descending. It's bobbing up and down in the wind, so it's slight climb. It's actually trying to keep... 2500 at the moment by hitting vertical speed here I'm going to click on it with the mouse and vertical speed down if I zoom in on that you can see vertical speed down vertical speed up if I click down you'll see that blue number there minus let's put it at minus 400 feet per minute I've now commanded, using vertical speed and vertical speed down, I've commanded the autopilot to climb down to 1,200 feet at 400 feet per minute. Let's increase that rate of descent. Once you've clicked vertical speed, you don't need to click it again. Once you see that blue number, the only time you'll need to click vertical speed again is when you reach your new assigned altitude. I'm going to click it down again to descend that's 500 feet just gonna watch my uh, speed that I don't over speed I'm not flying outside of London oh there's Al Watt hello Al another regular on our discord great to see you in the video great to see a few faces here really nice anyway let me not get distracted <laughs> So we're climbing, slowly descending to 1,200 feet. I'm going away from London. Actually, this is Heathrow Airport coming up, which we will be visiting and landing at later. But hold on for that, guys. That's going to be later. 
I now want to command the autopilot to follow a heading. Now, the current heading by default is this blue writing here where it's got heading. It might be different in other aircraft. Get the hang of this aircraft first, the Cessna 172. This blue writing denotes what your heading bug is set to. And this blue taper on the compass here shows where your heading bug currently is. If I put it into heading, hold, heading select now, let's do it. It's going to turn me towards that blue, as you can see here, this blue mark on a compass, or specifically 360 degrees. As you can see, it's turning me around because I've selected heading mode. But we can utilize that heading mode. Let me just move, let me just keep the view outside and just move my view in. By using this heading knob here, we can manipulate this blue mark. I want to go back to the east. So I'm going to mouse down on this heading knob. Oh, no, I'm going to mouse up <laughs> to move that heading bug towards the east. Mouse down or mouse up, and if you don't see it moving in the right direction, go the other way, just like I did. So I'm mousing up. I do have a one of my hat switches on my Velocity 1 flight, switch, flight stick to do this for me, but I'm going to use this heading knob here, just in case you don't have anything set up, and it works just the same. There we go, we're flying back towards London. We're also getting the ALTS, the Altitude Capture Mode. Well, now it's flashing ALT. We've reached our 1,200 feet altitude. You'll notice that blue box has disappeared now. Because we, we don't need any more vertical speed. We've reached our assigned altitude. Shall I show you that again? Just in case. So what I want to do is now climb down, descend... To 1,000 feet. So I've just moved the inner knob down a couple of notches to 1,000 feet. It's not going to do anything because I've not got vertical speed. The vertical speed box disappeared. Let's hit the vertical speed box. You'll see a number here. It's actually given me a number already. It's because I had some vertical speed set in previously. But I want to increase that to 400 feet per minute. So minus 400 feet per minute descent. So it's climbing down to 1,000 feet. As you can see, it's as easy as that. I want to move slightly to the right here, so I'm going to mouse up. Because I've got heading, HDG, by the way, means heading. You probably figured that out. There you go. I can manipulate my heading. If I want to fly back towards those buildings, I'm going to mouse down. So you can see the blue heading bug and this number change. And it's as simple as that. Using those functions, so you commanded autopilot or you selected autopilot altitude, select it, use vertical speed if it's not moving up or down, climbing or descending rather. Use your vertical speed up or down, down to descend, up to climb. Put it in heading mode, make sure HDG has come up. And you can ma manipulate where the aircraft is heading. Practice that, get used to that, before we move on to the next part, because now we're up in the air, we want to go and land, don't we? And we want to land, ideally using autopilot. Let me show you a full ILS landing with autopilot. Okay, so for this last part of the basic autopilot instructions for newbies, this is going to be a little bit more advanced. Practice the other steps before you come to this part. I'm going to go to world map. I'm going to select once again. My goodness, there's a lot of people now, isn't there? <laughs> I'm recording this on Sunday afternoon. Yeah, there's a lot of people. I'm going to see if I can get to it. Select runway 27 for my departure. And I'm going to come over to Heathrow Airport. Oh, goodness me. But I'm going to try and land at runway 27 right, set as arrival. Now, I said I want to show you some ILS goodness. We can do this straight from the world map. If you go down here, at the bottom here, you should see we're on Xbox or PC, a tab called More. Click on that. 
and go to open filters next open filters scroll down this new menu to the very bottom where it's got navigation and where it's got nav aids if this is not open just open the menu where it's got nav aids turn it on and we can close that box here what it gives you it gives you the ILS frequencies these squares are the ILS frequencies and identifiers for the various runways at the end of the runway you're landing on that's what your ILS will be for the runway you're landing on at the very end here ILS is a ground based system basically uh, so not all airports have ILS if they do you will see a box at the end of the runway like this it will give you the frequency which is 1110 well sorry 110.300 or 110.300 with the Cessna 172 you only get five digits so it'll be 110.30 keep that in mind I'm gonna make this slightly more difficult I'm gonna come in from an angle because I want to show you something in the actual flight remember this is more oh it's not letting me add if it doesn't let you add go back go back and go back to the main menu go back to your world map your flight plan will still save but now it will let me add yep thought so okay Cessna 172 with the G1000 still selected let's go fly Okay, so like I mentioned, this is a bit more advanced, but if you practice the other procedures that I showed you before, it should start to make sense. And this is, yeah, it's not overly difficult, but practice the other procedures first. First, I want to first explain what these nav things are, nav and com. Basically, this is short for navigation. And that's short for communication. That's the best way to remember them. NAV, navigation, COM, communication. If you alter these numbers here, it's going to... And you select an, a, a frequency, like we saw before. Why not do it? You can use these knobs, the inner and outer, to alter these numbers. The big knob here will do the numbers before the decimal. So if you remember... The ILS for Heathrow Airport was 110.3 or decimal 3.0 basically. So I'm using this outer knob, this little knob, to get to 3.0. That's it. So basically what these do, it will let you lock onto a nav frequency like an ILS, VOR, any sort of navigation aid in the air on the ground or perhaps even in the air it will let you lock onto those frequencies so you can fly towards them or land in this case if you alter these i'm not going to do it in this video but if you alter these you can tune into communications so atc air traffic control the tower at london city if you want to do it properly you can request takeoff the landing at london heathrow Atis to get the weather information at London Heathrow and that type of thing. We won't worry about these. Navigation are the ones we're going to worry about. This is standby and that's active. So on Nav 1 and Nav 2, same here, you've got COM 1, COM 2. You've got a couple of active, which is 110.5. Not quite sure where, what airport that is or what navigation aid that's locking onto. It doesn't matter. But that is the active navigation. To make this active, we've just changed the numbers. 110.30. Use the swap nav button here. And if you remember before on the world map, the identifier for that ILS was IRR at London Heathrow Airport. You can look this up on Google or on Maps if you want to, but just do it on the world map. Look at the identifier. We know we're locked onto the correct ILS identifier. That's all well and good. We're going to get up in the air and follow. Uh, we do have that course. By the way, it was kind of cheating doing this on the world map because what it will do, you can use the range knob here to range your map in and out. It was actually put that map you set up in the world map in your aircraft 
pilots don't have that luxury in real sussness with the G1000. You have to input the route manually. Not going to do that in this video. I'm going to save that for a future video in the same vein. So it'll be part two of this video, basically. And I'll do more advanced procedures like advanced landings and other things. We'll keep it simple. But yeah, it's inputted the map the route into our map so we can follow that using the nav button but let's get to that later we're locked onto our frequency that's all well and good once we get near the airport we have to switch the cdi button i'm going to talk you through this now we're in gps mode at the moment we want to be in lock one localizer one that stands for lock one mode localizer one mode to lock on you can see that's now gone green if i press the cdi button again this will go green it's now locked onto that frequency localizer two if i click the cdi button again it'll go back to gps you notice now this has moved down if i manipulate these nav knobs I'm now changing this number to get it back to the top it's not really important because we set our frequency left click and hold on the outer knob there and right click it will switch the blue border back to the top there so we can alter nav one if we need to we don't we don't need to i thought i, would, I was just show you that so yeah just keep that in mind when we get near to the airport i did say it's a little bit more advanced but try and follow along i'll go through this slowly click your cdi button that will go green it will be locked onto that frequency and I'll show you what we do once we get nearer to the airport. Let's put it back to GPS. That's where we want to be. Click that back to nav one. Going to set an autopilot altitude. I showed you how to do this before. The inner knob. It's the outer knob. <laughs> I always get that wrong. The outer knob, officially. Just clicked it once to get to 1,000. The inner knob to 1,200. We've got a course set up, so I'm going to manipulate the nav button to follow our course in the air. Possibly a lot of you know how to do this, but I'm not going to follow the nav straight away. I want to show you something first, and this is good practice for you as well. Try and follow along. I'm going to bank to the right away from the course, basically. So I'm going to bank in the opposite direction, because I, I want to show you what happens. So let's throttle up, release the parking brake. It's enough chitter chatter. And we'll just get up to speed here. Tiger moth in front of me. Lovely. Okay, up in the air. I'm just going to trim up a little bit just so I'm in a climb. And I'm going to bank, so I could just relieve pressure on holding my flight stick back. I'm going to bank to the right, away from the course, like I mentioned before. Still climbing. Don't want to climb too vigorously. Just going to climb a little bit, so I'm just trimming down a little bit. Bank into the right until I'm away from that magenta line. That aircraft symbol you can see on the map there. I want it away from that magenta line because I want to show you something. And something you should practice because it always comes in handy. So there we go. We'll just leave it a little bit longer to get away. Let's just trim for level flight. So um, I'm not descending or climbing essentially. I can bring the throttle back a little bit. That's going to help. There we go. Coming away from that purple magenta line, bring my throttle back a bit more as I was getting an over rev warning. I'll show you a little bit more about the rev gauge later. I'll be utilizing that. Am I far, far enough away? Don't I'm descending at the moment. Yeah, I won't sink. Let's just trim up again. Okay, that will do. What I'm going to do, I'm going to hit autopilot. Let's do it in the buttons down here. Autopilot. And I'm going to hit nav here. I do have a button set up for this on my controller, but I'll hit it from here. Press it from here. It's not locked onto the course. It's, it's, again, it's got our roll and pitch captured. What we were last, the last configuration we were in. It's climbing to our altitude. That's fine, but it's not locked onto the course. GPS, which is, if that's in green, it, it means it's locked onto our route. It's in white. 
because we're too far away, we certainly are now from that magenta line. You can see this is north up on my map. I need to come to the south, basically. So using heading mode again. Before I hit the heading mode select, I can actually put this blue marker to the south, which is down here. So I'm going to use this heading knob. Hope you practice this. This seems a bit quick for you. Go back to the previous parts of the video and practice using the heading knob. Set it up on your controller, it'll be a lot easier. I'm just going to move this down to the south. That will do. And I'm going to select heading mode. And of course what the aircraft's going to do now is bank to the left. You'll see the aircraft turn back towards the magenta course. And what will happen is GPS, once it gets near to that magenta course, magenta line rather, once it gets near to our course we set up basically, GPS will go green. Oh, what on earth is that? Let me just double check. Oh. I'm assuming that's someone fly. I don't know. Could be another sound bug in flight sim, of course. Oh, I thought that was all done with. Never mind, we're just going to have to put up with it, chaps. You'll probably come across the same thing. Once it gets near to that magenta line, GPS will go green. Heading will disappear. You just have a GPS green. Even though we've got heading mode selected, it doesn't matter. Once we get near to the course, because we selected nav before, nav mode it will lock onto GPS and, it, and you just see GPS in green up here let's get outside a moment see if we can see what's going on yeah there's still a lot of sound issues in flight sim isn't there <laughs> gotta hope sometimes it disappears that noise so let's just hope it does But we'll carry on regardless. Hopefully you can still hear me. I've got desktop speakers attached in front of me. I'm just going to turn them down because it's... <laughs> Hopefully that will help. Okay, we're getting towards the magenta line. Somewhat towards it. Keep your eye... Actually, let me just alter my view. So you can see the map here and you can see the what's going to happen here in a second. And sometimes you'll think, well, how does it know what direction to go in? Because it know, knew where you took off from. When you set up a course or route in your, in your flight sim, either by the world map or in the G1000 itself, whatever your next waypoint is, that's where the aircraft will head towards. It won't head backwards. It will head towards your next waypoint. So it will only go in one direction because you've actually inputted the route to head towards the next waypoint. I hope that's clear. Ah, <sighs> flight sim. Another frustrating little bug with you, isn't it? A sound bug. I do hope watching this part back that it's <laughs> you can hear me. Anyway, GPS has gone green. Let me just try something, chaps. I'm just gonna go to the menu. No, nope, still there, it doesn't matter. There's probably a way of doing it, I can alter the sounds. If it's that bad watching it back, I'll just have to re-record this part. Gives me a lot of hope, but hopefully you can still hear me. And it's part of the sim now, isn't it? For now. Okay, so we're heading towards... By the way, let's just talk about a couple of these different things going on with the display here. We took off from EGLC. We set a waypoint at a certain landmark. It's given it an identifier in the sim. USR01 is the identifier for that landmark. Once we've reached there, you'll notice this will change. This will go here, and here it will say EGLL, which means we're flying towards Heathrow Airport. So whatever landmarks, whether they're custom or actual landmarks in the sim, they give them an identifier in the Garmin. In this case, that's the identifier for the waypoint we set up before. And you can see here it's 3.6 nautical miles away. So, ah, the noise has stopped, thank goodness. At a bearing of 245. 
That's a bearing. Let's just see. Yeah, we are, we're heading towards 248 at the moment. Remember, we're on GPS. We're not on this mode here. We're on GPS now, 248. So we're roughly heading in the same direction. These are not going to measure up exactly until we get right on top of the waypoint. But it's roughly the same. And the rest, alt, we've reached our 1200 feet altitude, autopilot on, and GPS is on as well. So all's going well. Once we reach, and we're getting close to it, once we reach this waypoint we set up here, I'm going to switch it to, remember I showed you before, I can do it now. If I switch it now, GPS will switch off. Autopilot will stay on, but GPS will switch off. Just be aware of that. But I'm going to switch to that later to get this line towards the center, which means we'll be heading straight towards the runway. I'll show you that in a moment. Let's just switch it back to GPS. If you do that, just click nav mode again until you see GPS in green. And it will stay back on your course. We're reaching it. We're not far from it. Being blown about a bit, but that's okay. I'm going to use a bit of vertical speed. I want to get a bit higher because I want to capture that glide slope a little bit higher. So vertical speed, you can see the numbers come up here. I'm going to climb. Oh, I'm going to set a selected altitude. Altitude, that was my bad. I'm going to select it to... Oh, someone's doing acrobatics in front of me. I'll capture you in a moment. Select it to 2,000 feet. Press vertical speed again. And it's going to climb to 2,000 feet now. We've just actually passed our waypoint. There's Heathrow Airport. If I zoom in, let me get back to my default view. If I zoom in, our runway is more in this direction. I'm going to have to get steer the aircraft towards this direction to land up, line up with that runway. The way to do this, switch it to CDI first. Switch your CDI to localizer 1. Remember, I talked about this before. I want to get that green line in to join these two other lines, which means we'll be lined up with our airport. Let me just active pause there. Don't want to miss the runway. You can also see, so I'm active pause at the moment. Oh, that's Doberman. <laughs> what on Martin? <laughs> Who else is flying around? Let me just see if I can just see anybody else. I know a couple of us. Oh, Time Bandit as well. I think I recognize your name. Yeah, lovely to see you chaps. A couple of more symbologies. You've got the G for the glide slope, which means glide slope is in range. Let's just come down to this. I've got it in active pause. The diamond here will start moving down slowly once we get nearer to the airport. Once it reaches here, it means you're on the perfect height altitude to capture that ILS. Once that diamond gets down to the center, so it's right in the center here where that yellow line is. Once it reaches just about there, or just before it reaches there, I'm going to hit approach mode. That triggers the aircraft to essentially go into approach mode. It will capture, as long as you've got all these lined up, which I'm going to do in a moment. And I'm going to do it under active pause, just to make our life easier, because I'm talking a lot. Once it's all lined up, and that diamond's down here, it's going to capture that ILS, and it's going to keep you on the perfect altitude the closer you get to the airport, until we pretty much land on the runway. I'll show you that in a moment. I did mention that once I switch it to com, uh, lock 1, which we're in now, so remember, we came from GPS into lock one gps switches off it goes back into roll you've got vertical speed as we're climbing up to 2000 feet if we make it in time <laughs> doesn't matter if we don't i'm gonna move this heading bug remember what we did before i want to move it I'm mousing up to around here 33 more towards the north because i want to encourage that green line to come in to join up wherever that green line is whether it's this side or that side you want the heading bug to be on the same side as the green line because it will mean you're turning in that direction take your time with this one chaps it's a little bit complex but essentially all i'm doing here i've moved my heading bug to 331 degrees 
And that's the heading bug there. Once I select heading mode, it will turn us to the right. And that line will come closer. We're pretty much lining up with the runway. Let me just get my view back up here. That will do. So you can see what's happening. I'm going to click active pause so we're back in the flight. Select heading mode. It's gone into heading mode. You can see it's turning like I said it would. Once that line starts to come in, I'm going to alter that heading back towards the green arrow here at the top, which means we'll be hopefully lining up perfectly with our runway, which is just to our right at the moment. Keep an eye on the line, keep an eye on the diamond there when it moves down, as we are still climbing to that 2,000 feet, so we're going to hit the glide slope. Doesn't really matter what altitude you have, but... Uh, Good glide slope in the in intercept is 2,000 to 2,500 feet. So I'm just waiting for that green line to start moving down. You'll see it at the moment the diamond's moving down. I'm going to have to be aware. I might match this up perfectly. So by the time we've matched this uh, heading, the diamond might be in the center. Green line, is it moving down? Just going to encourage that heading bug a little bit further to the right because that diamond's moving down. Any second. It's right in the center now. That green line needs to move and it is. You know what? As it's moving in, I can activate approach mode. GS has lit up in green, which means the green line was near enough to the center for the autopilot to capture it. We were lined up near enough with that runway. The glide slope indicator was in the middle, the diamond. It's going to bank us back to the left a little bit. So the autopilot's taking over. Once you have that GS in green, it means you're golden. For a glide slope. That was a bit messy, chaps. I wanted to do that a bit sooner and set things up a bit sooner. But even a bit late, as you saw there. Encourage the green line to come into the center way before you get to the glide slope. Before that starts moving down, you're going to have an easier time. But even though I didn't, it's now moving me down. What I want to do now, because it's under autopilot control, it's... it's taken over my descent it's controlling my descent and it's controlling my roll basically it's lining me right up with the runway it's not controlling and you don't have any controls in the Cessna 172 for your speed you have to do it manually you want to slow down throttle back I'm gonna throttle back to be below 1900 rpm I'm keeping an eye on this rpm because I know below 1900 rpm is a good speed it's good rpm for flaps one stage flaps one speed this white taper by the way loc means localizer lock we're locked onto the localizer it's in green autopilot's on and glide slope is captured as well it's in green if it was in white it means it's not captured the white taper on the speed ribbon it's different in each aircraft but you'll normally have a white arc or taper that's where you want to be for flaps one. I'm getting there. I'm going to go deploy flaps one. Quick look outside. Flaps one is deploying. My speed's slowing down a little bit more. I'm, not, I'm now below 15, 1600 RPM. I want to get my speed to 70 or below. So I'll go to flaps two. Or stays two flaps. Speed is descending rapidly now. It's a nice speed to come into. If you want to, oh, there's Martin again, Doberman. Very fancy flying Martin, you show off. <laughs> but very nice. If you want to, you can let the air autopilot plonk you on the runway. It will just plonk you down, it won't flare. Not good practice, chaps. Just click your autopilot here or your autopilot button on your controller. That's what I'll be doing. Don't want my speed to go down much more. I'm just going to increase my RPM throttle a little bit more there. Maybe 1400 RPM. Perfect. That's a good speed. Just before we touch down, I'm going to disengage autopilot and land. 
Rewatch that part and basically line up, get these lines all lined up with both arrows pointing forward. You've got a small arrow here, a big arrow here, have them both pointing upwards. Get it all lined up before the diamond starts moving, you'll have an easier time. Doesn't matter, I still managed it. Once that green line was near enough to the center, I could hit approach mode and it goes into approach mode. It's the best way I can describe it. Simple as that, approach mode. It will actually just take control and line you up and bring you down as well, as you can see. We're over the runway. I'm going to take it off autopilot. You'll see autopilot flash. I've got control of my aircraft. I'm decreasing my throttle. Try and ideally stall it onto the runway. Don't lose centre line, Hoddison. Uh, oh, you know what that will do. Come off to the left there, people are flying. you got Toka there. Are you landing, my friend? You are. Bringing up my flaps. Just coming off to the left because people might be behind me wanting to land. Actually, I can taxi into this taxiway, can't I? Let's just slow down. You wouldn't get away with that in the Beaver, but we can in the Cessna. Fast braking. Come to this taxiway here. That will do. Parking brake on. Flaps are up. So there you go, chaps. So that's my more in-depth with autopilot functions. Basic autopilot functions are a bit more advanced towards the end there. Something for you to practice. In the next video in this series, I'll do another video on basic auto on autopilot functions for new newbies, new players. Practice this one first. Let me know how you're getting on. Next one, I'll be showing you more advanced stuff. In a similar vein, in a similar fashion, nice and slowly so that hopefully you can all follow along. Let me know your thoughts on the video. Give it a like if you've enjoyed it. Here comes Martin. Wave, Martin. <laughs> Give it a like if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe for more. There you go. And I'll see you soon.